Well, in the annals of radio pranks, this one was hardly among the most mean-spirited. But a mischievous attempt to phone a pregnant and hospitalized Duchess Kate for the amusement of Australian listeners took a very dark turn. After a nurse who seemed to fall for the prank was found dead, two shock jocks behind the hoax received threats, lost their show, and after days in hiding are now speaking out. Here's ABC's Cecilia Vega. They rang Queen Edward VII Hospital to check on Kate's condition. And they managed to get put through to Kate's ward. Can you believe what has happened today? In just a few days, this Australian DJ duo has gone from celebrating their now infamous prank... You know what? They were the worst accents ever. ...to sobbing about it. I mean, personally, I'm... Last night, DJs Mel Gregg and Michael Christian came out of hiding on Australia's Channel 9 TV, offering a tearful apology. The entertainment value wasn't us. It was meant to be in our silly accents. That's where it was meant to end. But it didn't end there. Instead, it ended in tragedy, with the apparent suicide of a nurse who quickly became the butt of a royal hoax heard around the world. These shock jocks were themselves shocked. Shattered, gutted, heartbroken, and obviously, you know, our, our deepest sympathies are with the family and the friends. There's not a minute that goes by that we don't think about her family and what they must be going through. And the thought that we may have played a part in that is... Here's the thing. We've been handed a phone number, all right? And we have been told that this phone number is the hospital mm. where Kate Middleton is currently staying. <laughs> Just last week, it was all laughs for Michael and Mel when they called up the London hospital where Kate Middleton was recovering from severe morning sickness, pretending to be Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yes. Just hold on. Um... Thank you. They say they never imagined they'd get through. Um, good morning. How may I help you? Hello. I'm just after my granddaughter, Kate. I want to see how her little tummy bug is going. Mummy! She's sleeping at the moment, Mommy. and she Mommy. has had an uneventful night. We thought a hundred people before us would have tried it. We just thought it was such a silly idea, and the accents were terrible. We... Not for a second did we expect to even speak to Kate, let alone have a conversation with anyone at the hospital we wanted to be hung up on. But that didn't happen. The call was patched through to Kate's private nurse, where some of the Duchess's personal health information was given out for the world to hear. She's been getting some fluids to rehydrate her because she was quite dehydrated when she came in. Um, but she, she's stable at the moment. OK, I will, I'll just feed my little corgis then. <laughs> The duo never could have predicted the tragedy that would follow. Days later, Jacintha Saldana, the nurse who first picked up, would be found dead. We, we both find out, found out about the same time, and I think it was... <sighs> it's the worst phone call I've ever had in my life. But things could get even worse for the DJs. They've been yanked off the airwaves, the radio station cancelled their show, all those biting headlines continue, and soon they may have to face questioning from the Australian police. Here in the streets of Sydney, there's still support for the team. She didn't sound like the Queen. No, 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 no. I think it was an amazing prank, um, but it's gone tragically wrong. But the global backlash has been fierce, from online death threats to calls for prison. The question becomes, as a legal matter, what possible crimes were committed by the prank itself? I think it's going to be nearly impossible to legally connect the prank to the death when it comes to criminal charges. The station announced it is suspending phony phone calls and advertising indefinitely. The real punishment here for the DJs and the stations can come from the public and from advertisers. That's going to be the way that they can really suffer. As for the popular DJs, they may be silenced and out of a radio job, but they have one final thing to say to a grieving family. I've thought about this a million times in my head that I've wanted to just reach out to them and just give them a big hug and say sorry. And I hope they're okay. I really do. For Nightline, I'm Cecilia Vega in Sydney, Australia.